In an industry stuffed with marketing bullshit, empty promises, and shiny suited liars, one woman's had enough. She knows what it's like to have the wrong clients, no money, and no time for fun. But she also knows how to fix it. And on the Business for Superheroes show, she promises to tell the down and dirty truth about business, sales, and running away with the circus. Here's your host, Vicki Fraser. Welcome to the Business for Superheroes show. I'm Vicky Fraser and this is my husband, Joe. Hello. Hello. This is the second take because Joe just made up a whole load of words that don't exist. Well, you didn't say anything. You pressed the button, you said nothing. I thought I'd have to rescue the podcast. So work. today we are drinking gin and tonic. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Uh, it's really nice gin as well. Mm. It's a good one, this one. This gin came from Kenda. Hi, Kenda. Hi, Kenda. Thank you. And it is um, Ungava Canadian Premium Dry Gin, and it's absolutely delicious. If any Canadians would like to send us more, you'd be very welcome. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm going to drink half of this gin and tonic and then not drink any more because that's what I tend to do now. And then I will finish it. Yes. After you've been to the chippy. Chippy. Because it's chip night. Yay. Um, right, so this is podcast uh, number 185. 185. It's still the Business for Superheroes show. <laughs> Although by the time you listen to this, we may have made a new podcast, and I might have re-edited the beginning of this. Really? To make it, yeah, to make it the uh, one thousand authors show. <gasps> yeah. Crikey! Spoiler. Um. So yeah, we are we are talking about today. Uh, not that. How to be writer's block. How to beat writer's block. And if you're listening to the audio version of this, I just did pretentious air quotes. Mm -hmm. because I don't think writer's block is a thing. Well... I think it's a, a crutch that... Um, anyway, that was for a different podcast. We're going to cover this in a different podcast. Um, so so basically, you're, you're how to re beat writer's block, but you don't believe it exists. Well, that, writer, that's, that's writer's your... block is the keyword that people are going to search for and find this, you see. Right. Um, but I am. Um, I don't. I don't think it's a thing, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in next week's podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we're going to talk about mindset and crutches and how we are brainwashed into believing limiting shit like writer's block is a thing. Because okay. I'm just going to leave this here. Plumbers don't suffer from plumber's block, do they? Uh -huh. No. Anyway, right. So. How do you know? Maybe they do. Well, maybe they do. I maybe when they're confronted with a chunk of house and they just go oh geez how am I going to get from here to there with that and oh, a, a scary you bend do I go under the floor do I go around the walls do I channel it out do I go, oh, man, how do we... right I'm just going to rein you in from your plumbing safari maybe they don't and have we're going to talk about well let's just do a quick dingle update because I I need to <sighs> having a, a Bronson problem oh I know it's little woolly face. He has tried to headbutt me several times in the last few days, and we can't have that because he's actually quite big. And I got a little bit scared earlier. That's no good. It's no good at all because I'm in charge, mm -hmm. not him. Well. And and uh, yeah, so I was I was googling some stuff, and um, in amongst all the frankly awful advice, like oh, if you get a, an aggressive sheep, it has to go to the freezer. It's like that's just not an option. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, but apparently, when they do their first little, oh, I'm going to have a go at you, um, it's quite half assed because they're not quite sure what's going to happen. And that's when you go way over the top. And that's when, yeah, that's when you basically, you don't hurt them. It's very difficult to hurt a sheep anyway because they're, you know, it's quite big yeah, and strong. Pretty sturdy. Um, but yeah, basically tip him over if you can, get him off his feet and just be like, no, I'm in charge. This is not happening. Mm. And you just got to, you know, make him humiliate him a little bit, really, and just be like, you're not the one who's in charge. So, and he's, we had him out earlier and he was delightful, wasn't he? So, yeah, it's fine. So, yeah. Uh, so hopefully I won't have to wrestle the tiny sheeps, but we'll see. If I do, Joe will film it. <laughs> um, and I made jam. Jam. I made jam for the first time ever, and it's elderberry jam. And who knew that was even a thing? Because I've decided I've gone a bit mental. Um, and my kind of I'm going to turn all of the hedgerow food, foods, nature's bounty, into stuff that we can eat. Because we've got loads of apples on our apple trees. We've, we've got loads of blackberries. We've had a couple of pies recently. A couple of pies, and I don't want the fruit to go to waste. Mm. So, and also, you know, with with Brexit and the end of the bloody world and don't don't get me started. Um, I think we ought to, you know, stockpile our own food so that we can hoard it from the people who voted to leave. <laughs> anyway, so 
Right, this, this this week we are, I had to be writer's block, and I just wanted to give you a little story about my advanced procrastination this week. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was supposed to be writing a book proposal mm-hmm. earlier this week, and what I was actually doing was sitting on the floor of my office, building a piece of office furniture for an office that I don't have yet. I can't use this piece of office furniture yet, but it is now built. Well, that's good. I know, and then I made jam. Also good. <laughs> <laughs> did the book proposal get written? Yes, it did. But well done. it got written in a shorter period of time than I would have liked. And it was more stressful than I would have liked because of the whole procrastination thing. So um, we sometimes describe procrastination as writer's block. Um, but what it means is that we don't do what we should be doing, which is sit down and write. Mm-hmm. And so this week, I wanted to talk a little bit about why that is and give you three ways to beat writer's block three ways to beat the blank page of doom okay so is this i mean do you think this is specific to books or is it for any piece of writing you might want to do is it sales copy is it website words is it you know blog posts well obviously it's specific to books because that's my jam Mm -hmm. it's very jammy week Uh, but yeah you you know if if you if you have to sit down and write something and this goes for everybody, professional writers and you know business owners who need to write something, whether it's a sales page or a sales letter or a blog post or an email or whatever. Yeah, it applies to anything. Anything that you need to... If you need to get a message across and you're stuck, mm-hmm. this will get you unstuck and it's really cool. So, because even if you've done a detailed outline and you've got your big idea and um, you know what you're... You know who you're writing for, why you're writing, um, all the rest of it, you still end up sometimes getting faced with a blank page of doom and you sit down and you're like, I know what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. And you've got this blank page and you're like, crickets. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. And it's it's really bad. And so it's it's kind of like, it's kind of like facing this insurmountable thing, like Frodo and Sam at the bottom of Mount Doom. You know, when they look up and it's just like, oh, how am I going to get up there? Right. There's a problem with this. What? Because those big eagles brought them all the way home, Right. Yes. Why couldn't the big eagles have just took them all the way there in the first place? Or even just taken the rings and dropped them in? Why did they have to walk all that way? Because it's not about the destination, Joe. It's about the journey. That would have been a really dull story, wouldn't it? Well, the t- 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 practicalities of it. We're going on a storytelling safari, just for a moment, dear listener and viewer. So, this is this is the thing about telling stories. Yes, Okay, maybe that's a flaw. I don't think that I don't think actually the eagle I don't think could have just taken the ring because you know what you know how the people the ring bearers behaved. They were obsessed with it and oh, I yeah. don't okay. but they could have I mean pick Frodo up, take him to Mount Doom, chuck it in. There must home. have been a reason for them not doing that, but that would have been a really dull story. And we would not have known a lot about Frodo and Sam and how they changed. And that's kind of the point is, you know, the, the a story isn't about what happens, it's about how the characters change as the story progresses. That's what a story is really about. So you know, okay, so you know Die Hard, classic film. Yes. It's about terrorists, terrorists and Hans fire, Gruber. Guns. And fire. It's not. It's about a man who's trying to win back his wife. And Hans Gruber and terrorists and. No, that's oh, oh, oh. just that's the plot. That's not the story. The plot and the story are two different things. Mm. The Matrix. The plot is, you know, machines taking over the world and enslaving humanity. The story is about how Neo awakens and changes and, you know, and also, you know, he wants to get the girl. There's a difference. If it was just about, if, if the story, if the story was just about robots uh, taking over the world and humanity being enslaved, it would be boring. We wouldn't care. But we we care about Neo and who he is and how he changes. Anyway, that's an entirely different podcast for an entirely different day. Okay. Uh, so, anyway, I just the point is, shush. The point is, if you're faced with the blank page of doom, you end up being paralysed. And the key to beating the blank page of doom and actually getting somewhere is taking action. So, if you take any action related to your goal, progress will happen. Right. If you take any action related to your goal, yeah. okay, right, yeah. So I, I won't say any action because if you're stuck with the blank page of doom and then you drink gin, that's probably not going to help. It might do, I don't know. I'll end up with something on the paper. Yeah, maybe vomit. I don't know. Um, but what I mean is, if you are stuck with the blank page of doom and you're, you know, 
you need to write something, just flip and write something. Mm -hmm. But that on its own is not terribly useful advice. So today I have three ways for you to beat the blank page of doom and I'm going to share them with you. Okay. They are three fun writing exercises to loosen you up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So think of these writing exercises as your warm-up. Um, so the same way that I would never get on a trapeze without warming my shoulders and my back and all the rest of it up because I will get injured. Um, you wouldn't start a workout in the gym without warming up. Don't start writing without warming up either. Okay. Uh, you can do these exercises at the start of every writing session if you like. You don't have to. I think they're a good one. So the first one, exercise numero one, is the modernist poetry exercise. Oh. <laughs> See, so, that's, worse, that's worse than trying to write the thing I need to write. Well, maybe. You'll, we'll see. So um, you open it. Here's how it works. You open a blank page, either paper or on your computer, and you write the first word that comes into your head. It could spoons. Be, spoons. Yeah, cool. Could be anything. Spoons. Uh, now write another word, unrelated to the first jellyfish. one. Jellyfish. <laughs> spoons and jellyfish. I like it. Um, must be disconnected from the previous word. Um, your perfectionist inner dickhead may not like this, but, you know, you can ignore him because he's a dick. Then write a third word. Artichoke. Spoons, jellyfish, artichoke. And then a fourth word? Carpet. Cool. <laughs> so there we have, and then you can play with the words as well. Listen to the sounds that they make rather than their meaning. I think Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll and Edward Lear's Nonsense Rhyme. So you can make up new words and you can come up with random nouns and you can turn nouns into verbs and vice versa. You can break all the rules of grammar and don't use any punctuation and don't be embarrassed. So what have we got? We've got spoons... Jellyfish. Artichoke. Artichoke carpet. Okay, so we could have spoon the jellyfish with the artichoke, carpet the palanquin. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's kind of the point. It's ridiculous. So here's one I made earlier. Okay. Right? Um, then this this is one that I share in my new book, which is uh, available to pre-order now. Um, and it goes... Socks on trivet. Glow stick hides in Earl Grey tea. Halo the spatula and bromate the sally. Petrichor on the palanquin. Right. Makes no sense at all. Right. Um, Petrichor's a great word. It is. Do you know what it means? Yes. Awesome. Do you know what it means, dear listener and reader? Most people won't. I was really pleased the other day to be able to slip in the word Octothorpe into the conversation. Mm. And you didn't know what it was. I know. And I've forgotten what it was. Yes. What is it? It's the proper name for the pound sign. Do you mean the hash sign? Well, yes. But the pound sign is the proper is a slightly more proper word for the hash sign. I know. Why is it why is it called a pound? Why is that? There's a long and complicated reason. I can't go into it right Should now. Should we do a podcast you don't know, do you? No, I do. It's all it's all to do with um it is to do with weights and measures. Well let's do a podcast on it one day because it's relevant to writing and stuff. And I'm a nerd. <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> and stuff. Okay, so that is, that's the first thing. Come up with words you never knew you knew. Make up words. It's a really good ex It's a really good game for exercising your creative muscles and letting go of your need to get things right. It's good for loosening you up. And have a play with it. You know, turn, turn, turn weird words into verbs. So, you know, the word Google used to be a noun and it's now a verb. You Google things. Mm -hmm. Hoover used to be a noun, and now you Hoover things. Okay. That kind of that kind of thing, and you can do that with anything. So you know, haloing spatulas and bromating sallies. I don't know what the hell that means. I think you can bromate things. Can you? Mm. Probably not a sally though. Um, if she's amenable. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, do a little bit of modernist poetry. Just whatever word comes into your head, get them on paper, and then see if you can stick them together. Mm -hmm. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. And the fewer blank pieces of paper you've got. Yeah, and then you've got rid of that blank piece of paper because that is the mental block. Okay, do you want to know the second? The second one. The second writing exercise. Second writing exercise is the writer's write exercise. Okay. And I learned this from one of my mentors, John McCulloch. Hi, John. Hi, John. And he tells me that he got it from a chap called Steve Manning. Hi, Steve. I don't know who Steve Manning is. Neither do I. Um, hi, Steve. Uh, it's a, a really good activity, actually, and it's it works very well. It's I guess it's kind of a variation on the Pomodoro technique. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of that? I have. Yeah, and that's where you set a timer and you just do stuff for 25 minutes, or however long you set it for. Okay, so here is how you do it. You get a timer of some description, and if you haven't got a clock or whatever, then you can just go onto Google and type timer in, and it'll set a timer for you and then bingle at you when it's when it's done. Cool. Set it for five minutes, grab a piece of paper and a pen, or 
a word processing document and write down these three words, flamingo, cheese, pyjamas. Pick one of the three words as the first word you write and it must be the first word of the first sentence you write. So flamingo. Right. I'm choosing. Start your timer and start writing. Write as fast as you can. Don't stop to edit. Write anything that comes into your head. The other two words, cheese and pyjamas, must appear at least once in your first paragraph and after that, just go wild. Okay. Um, And then write for the whole five minutes. Don't stop to think. Don't stop to edit. Just don't stop. And you will find, by the time the timer stops, you'll be pleasantly surprised at how high quality it is. The first paragraph might be nonsense, but if you just write then you'll find that your brain puts stuff together and it actually comes out quite well. This is a really good exercise to do if you are stuck, for example, on a chapter of your book and you just can't get started with it. Try the exercise with keywords from your chapter. Okay. So, for example, I might try this exercise if I was if I was writing on um, dealing with your inner dickhead. Mm-hmm. So I might have my three words might be inner dickhead, mm. as one word, um, perfectionism, Fear. They might be my they might be my three words. And so I might start my sentence with the word perfectionism and say perfectionism is the tool that my inner dickhead uses to create fear in my head. And then I would carry on from there because that's actually quite a you know, it's quite a good so it's not a good start to, to use as the final mm-hmm. chapter of the book, but it's a good start to get your thoughts flowing and it's like, okay, what is the problem that I need to write about here? You use those three words. You might you'll probably need to throw away the first paragraph or two, but I bet after that you'll have something that you can use. Something for your shitty first draft and yeah. off you go. Exactly. Cool. Fix the typos later because they don't matter. Just just, you know, if, if you are somebody who has to fix typos, either turn off your spell check so it doesn't highlight stuff as you're writing or put a piece of paper over your screen or something. And just blather it out. And just blather it out, yeah. That's a really good one. This is a particularly good one if you don't want to do kind of a creative exercise like the modernist poetry. This is a really good one if you're like, right, I'm stuck on this specific thing. Choose your three keywords and start writing about them, uh, even if they're nonsense. Cool. Yeah, I like that one. Hmm. Uh, and... Number three, exercise number three, is the mundane story exercise. And I use this quite often. If you read my daily emails, you will know that I do this quite often. Um, and a good because a good way to start writing is to find a story, just a story, and then link it to the topic that you're writing about. And this is why I collect stories. This is why I save things that I hear and read, and I've got massive files on my computer full of random stories. So the, the, good, the example that I'm going to use is I wanted to write about how, you know, the big problem with most websites is that they're bad and confusing and Mm -hmm. people don't know what to do with them. And I was like, well, that's just a really dull topic to just write about. Oh, most websites are boring and bad and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, what analogy can I make? And the analogy that I could make, because this had happened to me earlier in the day, was I had gone looking for an egg timer in the kitchen and I couldn't find it anywhere. And I was like, oh, my God, I think it might be in the kitchen drawer of doom. Right. Because everybody has a kitchen drawer of doom, don't they? Yes, yes. It's a kitchen drawer that's just filled with crap and things that will bite your fingers and just... Old chopsticks. Old chopsticks and mouse droppings, probably, and, you know, just, oh, all sorts of badness. And so you're like, I've got to go into the kitchen drawer of doom. And I used it as an analogy because bad websites are kind of like the kitchen drawer of doom. You land on them and you're like, I literally have no idea what to do next if I'm in the right place or even what this business does. And so what you do is, <laughs> what I did with the egg timer thing was I don't, I bleh, like my brain stopped working and I didn't like it. And I went to Amazon and I bought a new egg timer. And that is what will happen to people. If your website is terrible and it resembles a kitchen drawer of doom, people will leave your website and go to Amazon <laughs> to get what they want. Does that make sense? Mm. So that's that's a really that's a really good way. If you've got a topic that you want to talk about, have a look at all the stories that you've collected. Have a think about conversations that you've had, TV shows you've seen, films you've seen. Is there something that you can take and flip into an analogy for the point that you want to make? Cool. Yeah. And that's that's your three writing exercises. That's the three things that you can uh, use, the three techniques you can use to get you over the blank page of doom. Nice. Yeah. So the blank page of doom is never going to disappear for good. 
I, you know, I write for a living. I've written millions of words and I still get stuck. Um, but it doesn't have to be insurmountable. It shouldn't stop you from writing. It shouldn't stop you from getting stuff down on paper and finishing your book or writing your blog post or whatever it is that you want to do. Because all you have to do is start. That's all you have to do. And in this, in this podcast, I've given you three ways to get words on paper, which is the most important thing. Sure. Uh, if, if these three things don't work for you, just close your eyes and mash the keyboard with your fingers until actual words, you know, until your fingers feel compelled to start producing words because you, there's only so long you can do that before you're like, I, I need to type, I need to type things. And then things will fall out of your brain and onto the computer screen. And then you edit like hell. Then you edit like hell, yes. So um, so what's the takeaway this week, Joe? Um, uh, I guess it's it's write, write, write things down. Just write, even if it's rubbish, write it. Um, it says gibberish, though. Even if it's gibberish, yeah. sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'll look at the notes next time. Um, yes, blank pages are beaten by having things written on them. <laughs> yes, profound. Mm. Joe Fraser, 2019. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You're such a philosopher. Oh, I try. Oh, yeah. I try. Yeah. yeah. Um, right. Next week, uh, we're gonna talk, we're gonna deconstruct my controversial statement that there's no such thing as writer's block, and then I'm gonna wait for the haters to roll in. No. It's it's a statement. It is a statement. So yeah, next week we're gonna look at what is writer's block, why it's not a thing, and the psychology. You know, behind it, really. Of the things that aren't. Of things that aren't, yes. Oh, we can talk about purple. <gasps> we can talk about purple. Oh, we, we're going to talk about... I'm going to... Hang on, hang on. <laughs> purple. Purple. I've just written that in big capital letters. <laughs> purple. So, yeah, tune in next week, because then you'll get to hear about the secrets of purple. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, right, what's going on in Superheroes Land? So, my book... Is having some final illustrations done by Julia. Hi, Julia. Hi, Julia. I'm really excited. And then I'll be getting a proof copy sent to me, hopefully in the next week or so. Hi, Hi Bill. Bill. <laughs> but you can pre order the book right now at www.moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash pre order the book, all one word. Link is in the show notes. I'm so excited. Nice. I'm so proud of this book. Cool. I'm also terrified that it's a big pile of shit and people will hate it, but I'm also really proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just what happens though, isn't it? Yeah. You publish a book. Yeah. Terrifying. And, you know, if you are thinking, I quite like to write a book, but it's really scary, and how do these people who have it all, you know, have their shit together and know what they're doing, how do they do it? I'm terrified. I'm terrified. But you write it all down and it's in a book. Yeah. And I'm really proud of it. And also, I'm really terrified that it's a big pile of shit. So, yeah. So that's it. You can go and do that. You can go and order my big pile of shit. <laughs> you can go and order all of my neuroses, neatly packaged in um, tree-based media. Nice. Uh, yeah. So if you have listened to every episode of this podcast, email me with your postal address and I will send you a little special super fan gift because, you know, I think that's bonkers. You're completely crazy. Yeah. But also we really appreciate it. Thank you. And if you like this podcast, please go to iTunes and leave us a, a rating. Mm, five stars. Five stars. And uh, review us as well. And Or, you know, go wherever you get your podcast from and subscribe to us and leave us a review there. And share it. If you know somebody who will enjoy this nonsense or if you know somebody who gets stuck writing, send them a link to this episode. Um, you know, just send them a link. Mm. Yeah. I was going to give the old URL out then, but I'm going to have a new website by the time this is up. <gasps> I'm so excited. I'm right. really proud of my website as well. Right, chips. It's chips. Time for chips. Time for chips. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back same time next week uh, talking about purple. Nice. Bye. Bye. Like what you've just heard? Tell your colleagues. Tell your friends. Send them to www.businessforsuperheroes.com slash podcast. Hello and welcome to the Business for Heroes Superca- Supercast number 185. I'm Vicky Fraser and this is my husband, Joe. I think I'm just going to... Start again? Start again, yeah. Okay, yeah.